Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I am going to do a versus comparison of the two new generation Ghostbusters movies, Afterlife and Frozen Empire, and giving my opinions on which parts of each one I thought was better than the other. I will also give my overall opinion on which movie I think overall was better. As always, please do not forget to give this video a like, leave a comment, and if you feel like it, subscribe to my channel. The starring cast is the same from both movies. McKenna Grace is Phoebe Spangler. Paul Rudd is Mr. Gruberson. Finn Wolfhard is Trevor Spangler. Terry Coon is Callie Spangler. The supporting cast is almost identical as well, other than a few newly added characters in Frozen Empire. Of course, what would the Ghostbusters be without the OGs? So naturally we have the returns of Bill Murray as Dr. Venkman, Dan Aykroyd as Ray Stantz, Ernie Hudson as Winston Zeddemore, Annie Potts as Janine Melnitz, and only in afterlife in CGI form, Harold Ramis as Egon Spengler. So pretty much the gang's all here, albeit some in one movie and not the other. So moving on, let's compare the storylines and the movie locations. First up, Afterlife. Set 32 years after the events of Ghostbusters 2, we follow single mother Callie and her two children, Phoebe and Trevor, who moved to an Oklahoma farm they inherited from her estranged father, Egon Spengler, a member of the original Ghostbusters. Phoebe is enrolled in the local school where she meets teacher Mr. Gruberson. Phoebe, while at the Fan Arm House, finds an old ghost trap, which she brings to school. Phoebe, alongside her new friend, podcast to Mr. Gruberson while trying to open and see how the Trap works, release a ghost which makes its way to an abandoned, old, underground bunker, where one of the OG Ghostbusters' original foes is being contained, Gozer, from the original Ghostbusters. From there, our new generation Ghostbusters get their first lesson, ghost busting, when Gozer makes her return and turns Callie and Mr. Gruberson into slaves. Baby, along with her, the ghost of her grandfather, Egon, try to take Gozer down. They initially fail. That is until the OGs show up and we are given a glimpse of the old days with all four of them alongside Phoebe fighting alongside each other and eventually vanquishing Gozer. Now we move on to Frozen Empire where we see the Spangler family along with Mr. Gruberson return to the iconic New York City firehouse where the original Ghostbusters have taken Ghostbusting to the next level. The movie opens up with us going back in time to July 1904 and firefighters being dispatched to the Manhattan Adventurers Society and upon entering they find the members frozen and a man in a suit of armor, one of the firemasters, holding an orb. Upon removing the orb from his hands, the man awakens and the members fall to pieces. We then fast forward 120 years to the new Ghostbusters who have taken on the helm of catching ghosts. They are chasing down a sewer ghost from Hell's Kitchen through the streets of New York City, to which they cause a good amount of damage. The mayor, who has hired out for the Ghostbusters since the original film, holds them responsible and ultimately causes Phoebe to be benched because she is underage, which leads to us to meet her true co-star, Melody, played by Emily Allen Lynn. They form a bond, friendship, and possibly even a relationship but things are not as they seem, because also during this time period of the movie, the orb slash ancient artifact from the beginning of the movie that can unleash an evil force, Karak, has also been found, making its way into Ray Stant's shop via the original Firemaster's grandson, Nadim. We then find out that Melody has had an ulterior motive this whole time. She lures Phoebe into a trap ultimately unleashing the rock. Now the Ghostbusters, new and old, must unite to protect their home and save the world from a second ice age, which, try as they may, they ultimately can't do without Melody and Nadine. The same Melody who has now had an epiphany and uses her one remaining match to kickstart Nadine's Firemaster powers, but ultimately all unite and are able to send Garak back into the ruptured ghost containment machine. The machine seals itself and we see Phoebe and Melody part ways as Melody 
moves on into the fabric of the universe. So when doing my versus comparison, I wanted to note that I actually saw Frozen Empire before I saw Afterlife, which I thought Frozen Empire was good. It definitely gives off nostalgia with the return of the old firehouse. However, storyline and location wise, Afterlife just seemed more authentic. It seemed more genuine and less like they were reaching for something compared to Frozen Empire. However, when it comes down to comparing both of the endings, it's kind of a toss up. Even though the ending in Afterlife was a tribute to Harold Ramis and the Egon character, which made it really good and also made it special, the ending to Frozen Empire with the send off of Melody was also really good, even though maybe not as special. Now as far as the overall characters, obviously no one is going to top the original Ghostbusters crew. They are called the OGs and legacy characters for a reason. However, McKenna Grace character Phoebe is definitely a worthy contender. She gives a very genuine performance in both movies. I like the fact that they linked her to ghosts via the chessboard in both movies. It almost makes it seem like that chessboard is a vessel or a communication device of some sort. However, there again, the performances in Afterlife by the main characters, as well as the OG Ghostbusters, is just better. I'm not damning Frozen Empire, because I did enjoy it as well. However, I just lean more towards Afterlife as far as if I was going to pick one of the two movies to watch again. The storytelling is just better in my opinion. So in the versus comparison, my winner is Afterlife. But don't forget to let me know what you think. And as always, thank you for watching.